Hello, military and aerospace enthusiasts. Welcome to our channel, Deep Dive Defense. Over here we take a deep look from unusual angles, which may challenge your mind. So let's dive right in. Today's topic is the Guillaume Liquid Propellant Ballistic Missile, of which two variants exists. One categorized as a short-range ballistic missile, and the other as a medium-range ballistic missile. The Guillaume was developed to make use of the existing production line and infrastructure created for its predecessor Shahab-1 and Shahab-2 ballistic missiles. The Shahab-1 is based on the Soviet-designed R-17 missile, NATO codename Scud-B, with a 300-kilometer range. The Shahab-2 is an improved design from the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, known as the Scud-C, which extends the range to 500 kilometers. The Shahab-1 and 2 are detailed in a separate topic, Around the mid-1990s, following the commencement of Shahab-2 Scud-C production, the Defense Ministry's aerospace organization, responsible for these liquid propellant missiles, focused on developing the Shahab-3, and later on its more advanced evolution, the Ghadr. It was only after completing these projects that work on the Guillaume began, aimed at replacing the Shahab-2 on its production line. Development of the Guillaume started after the mid-2000s, resulting in the Guillaume 1, which was unveiled by 2010. At this point, Iran had the option to replace the Shahab-2 Scud-C missile with the Korean Scud-D, which offered a similar range improvement to what the Guillaume would later achieve. However, by then, Iran's missile technology had advanced to the point where simply adopting a Korean design was not an attractive option anymore. The Guillaume aimed to match the size of the Shahab-2 Scud-C, allowing the existing operational infrastructure and equipment to be adapted for its use, something not easily possible with the larger Korean Scud-D design. The changes from the Shahab-2 Scud-C to the Guillaume were substantial, constituting a deep redesign rather than a mere modification, with differences even more significant than those between the Shahab-3 and Ghadr. The experience gained from developing the Ghadr provided a foundation for the Guillaume development. Some key technologies were refined by studying the Soviet R-27 submarine-launched ballistic missiles, which both Iran and Korea had acquired. A key feature incorporated into the Guillaume, similar to the Ghadr, was the division of the tanks into several sections and the use of a common bulkhead. This design helped manipulate the missile's center of gravity, allowing it to carry a heavy 650-kilogram warhead without significantly increasing its length compared to the Shahab-2. Another innovation enabled by R-27 SLBM technology was the removal of aft stabilization fins, which created undesirable weight at the rear of the missile, adversely affecting its center of gravity. In the Guillaume 1, rear stabilization fins were eliminated, and stabilization was achieved using the jet vane thrust vector control system, which was already present in the original Scud design. The Guillaume's new guidance system enabled the thrust vectoring to react sufficiently quickly for stabilization purposes, as well as its main roll trajectory steering. Another key feature compared to the Shahab 2 was the separable re-entry vehicle. This meant that the aft stabilization fins became unnecessary, as the missile did not re-enter the atmosphere as a whole. Instead, the empty booster separated from the spin-stabilized re-entry vehicle. This approach not only resolved center of gravity and center of pressure issues, but also allowed for the portal launch method. The missile became instantly stable upon motor ignition, whereas aerodynamic stabilization fins required a certain minimum speed to be reached first to become effective. The Guillaume's capability to launch from caverns deep within mountains through a portal opening was a significant advancement, reducing the risk of the missile accidentally hitting the portal walls during launch. The guidance system that enabled this capability was a new development for Iran. This guidance system was the first all-in-one system, integrating the initial measurement unit and the flight computer into an inertial navigation system with integrated flight computer. This compact system reduced significantly the length of the avionics compartment compared to the Scud design, saving space. The guidance system is believed to use dynamically tuned gyroscopes with precision slightly improved compared to the Gatter's system allowing the use of submunition warheads against large area targets and a less effective unitary warhead as secondary option. The Guillaume 1 was primarily designed to target adversary air bases which could reach Iran, aiming to disrupt tactical air power and operations. Its submunition payloads can be released exoatmospherically if missile defense systems are active, similar to the Ghadr. 
With its 750 km range, the Giam effectively threatens adversary stationing of tactical air power close to Iran's border, forcing the need for in-flight refueling for tactical air power to reach Iran, and hence significantly lowering the effective sortie rates. Additionally, the Giam switched from a steel airframe to an aluminum alloy one, which is a key factor in achieving a 750 km range with the same motor and fuel as the Shahab 2 Scud C while only decreasing the warhead weight by about 100 kilograms. The commonality of the triconic warhead designs between the Ghadr and the Guillaume facilitates standardization and compatibility in the arsenal. Additionally, the Guillaume missile remains compatible with the launchers of the Shahab-1 and Shahab-2, which can be easily modified to operate the similarly sized Guillaume. This compatibility ensures that all launch vehicles previously produced for these older generation missiles can now be used for the Guillaume. Notably, the main missile launcher for the Guillaume is a low footprint truck, compact enough to be disguised as a civilian transporter truck, significantly improving its survivability against enemy strikes. The Guillaume's much smaller size compared to the Shahab 3 and Ghadr also makes it a more economically viable weapon. The new missile design for the old Shahab 1 and Shahab 2 production lines has roughly tripled the range from the original 300 km Scud B. Consequently, the Guillaum has become a critical weapon for the IRGC Aerospace Forces, with its production volume believed to be among the highest of Iranian ballistic missiles, if not the highest. For the Aerospace Forces, the Guillaum addresses the air power suppression role effectively and at a low cost with a comparatively compact missile. The next member of the Guillaum family is the Guillaum II, which extend the range to 1,000 km and incorporate a maneuverable re-entry vehicle, MARV to effectively target single objects, as opposed to primarily area targets, the Guillaume one was designed to hit. The development of the EMOD medium-range ballistic missile was first to make widespread use of MARV. It enabled the creation of the MARV for the Guillaume II. However, the Guillaume II's requirements are less stringent due to its slower re-entry velocity, remaining below Mach 9. Its MARV is believed to be solely a precision device with a direct descent, not performing evasive maneuvers to counter adversary missile defenses or involving any glide phase. This approach keeps costs comparatively low and delegates the task of striking targets defended by missile defenses or the missile defenses themselves to more specialized ballistic missiles. The primary motivation behind the Guillaume 2 is to create a near-point strike capability with a maximum 50-meter circular error probability CEP with more advanced versions of the Marvi believed to achieve a CEP of 10 meters. The modification that allows the Guillaume 2 to reach a 1,000 km range goal is believed to be an improved motor, which uses UDMH as fuel instead of less energetic kerosene. Interestingly, the Guillaume 2 added small rear stabilization fins, which had previously been removed from the Guillaume 1. This is partially because such small stabilization fins provide useful stabilization while being low weight, allowing the jet vane thrust vector control system to engage less intensively, thus improving efficiency. For the Guyam 2, this also increased efficiency since the canards at the top of the missile create vortices and center of pressure issues mitigated by the rear stabilization fins. Operationally, the Guyam has been used by Yemen's Ansarala against Saudi Arabia. Initially, scuds provided by the People's Republic of Korea in the past were modified with Guyam features, to allow to strike Saudi Arabia's capital, Riyadh. Later, also variants with MARV similar to the Guillaume II were used. Iran first used Guillaume ballistic missiles against ISIS targets in Syria in 2017, and against the US-operated base, Ayn al-Assad in Iraq in 2020, during retaliation strikes for the assassination of General Qasem Soleimani. In Yemen, the Guillaume modifications, and the capability to strike sensitive Saudi targets, such as the capital city, are seen as events, contributing to the Saudi decision to agree to a ceasefire. With the Qiyam, Iran has developed a low-cost, producible ballistic missile design capable of striking a wide range of threats around Iran, targeting large areas or single objects. Its unfueled long-term deep storage means its lifetime cycle costs are amongst the lowest for ballistic missiles in its performance class. This gives the Guillaume a prominent role in the missile force structure of the IRGC Aerospace Forces. Closely related developments like the Rezvan and the missile Yemen's Ansarallah calls Akil will eventually replace the Chiam in production, continuing the lineage. 
So that's all for today. If you enjoyed this video and like our work, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. We will try our best to answer your comments. Your support would be greatly appreciated and motivates to produce more content in the future. Thank you, and have a great day.